Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. In today's video, I'll be doing a spoiler-free series review and also a review of Mother of Learning Arc 4 by Nobody103 or Domagoy Krumaj. This entire review will be spoiler-free and I know this is very late uh, because I finished reading Arc 4, which is the final volume in Mother of Learning uh, last month. But better late than ever, I really love this series and I want to include a spoiler-free series review on my YouTube channel. It will probably be a brief review, but anyway, I hope you will enjoy watching this video and by the end of it, I hope you will give this series a try if you haven't read it. Mother of Learning was one of my priority series that I want to start and finish this year. And I am pleased that Mother of Learning by Nobody103 or Domagoy Kurmaj is the first web novel that I finished and it certainly won't be the last. At 784,000 total word count and approximately 2,400 pages, Mother of Learning is a relatively short web novel series. As I mentioned in an earlier video, many critically acclaimed fantasy web novel series tend to have more than 2 million word long of word count. Compared to them, Mother of Learning is a short series. And just as a reminder here, Mother of Learning is a series that revolves around Zorian Kaczynski as he accidentally gets caught in a time loop and he is doomed or blessed to repeat it every time he reaches the day of the annual summer festival. It is a never-ending month for Zorian and as he tries his best to find a way to escape the time loop, he's taking advantage of his situation to advance his skill and knowledge as a mage. Think about how limited this premise is again. I was already impressed by what the author achieved in the first book to keep the narrative engaging. And this notion is incessantly escalated throughout the whole series. Zorian repeats this month over and over again for years, more or less a decade in total. In theory, this should get old quickly, but it did not. The constant acquisition of new abilities, mechanics, encounters, friendships, revelations, and the gradual progression of everything never fails to make the narrative captivating to me. Evidently, with this premise, Nobody103 shows the countless paths that can transpire in our everyday lives daily, how the slightest change in action can cause a drastically different result. This time loop fantasy series, among many things, is a story that works as a remembrance to appreciate what we have. It is shocking that Mother of Learning is the second new series for me that I managed to finish reading uh, this year. The first one was the Drowning Empire trilogy by Andrea Stewart, and this is unacceptable. I used to be much more focused on finishing a series rather than repeatedly starting a new series. And Mother of Learning Arc 4 made me realize I should go back to concentrate on finishing more series as I did in the past. At least I should prioritize it more. I felt immense satisfaction upon finishing uh, Mother of Learning Arc 4. I believe many great fantasy or sci-fi series can make you look back to the beginning of the series, the beginning of our journey in that world and series. Remembering what you've read and experienced instead of moving on immediately to a new world or a new series. Whether it is true or not, it will make you think most of the plot lines and developments have been planned or foreshadowed ever since the early stages of the narrative. Reading Mother of Running to its completion reminded me of that again. Arc 4 is the culmination of every meticulous plan Zorian has accumulated and prepared for years. A few readers have told me they couldn't stand Zorian's characterizations at the beginning of Mother of Learning. Nothing wrong with this, this is a fair criticism, but I need to mention Zorian is a character that started off unlikable and he grew to become more and more likable and empathic as the series went by. Remember the length of the series here. The first 25% of Arc 1 is not a sign of the quality of the entire series. Far from it. The character development of Zorian, Zack, and I will even say the main villain are some of the most remarkable things about Mother of Learning. The first half of the series was heavily centered around Zorian, his actions, leveling up, and his mission to escape the time loop. And although Zorian definitely played a significant role as the main character throughout the remainder of the series, Zack started to become one of the main characters in the series in Mother of Learning, Arc 3, and Arc 4. The knowledge, all the magic progression, and the friendships Zorian built and lost all played an irreplaceable spotlight in this final installment. I truly appreciate this. Characters or storylines I thought weren't important turned out to be integral. 
like Silver Lake, for example. And with this decision, I felt more invested in the supporting characters, their actions, and their feelings for Zorian. For years, I have stopped myself from reading web novels. Many readers have voiced their opinions that web novels are filled with incredible stories but unpolished writings. Although I cannot say the same for other web novels, but I did not feel that in Mother of Learning. This could be because I read the editions published by Raidmark instead uh, of the web novels. So feel free to enlighten me on this. From my experience though, the series may not contain the most beautiful writing or passages, but it is accessible, well polished, and the pacing never felt distracting. If you like Brandon Sanderson's style of accessible and vivid writing that focus on the narrative more than the beauty of the prose itself, you might click well with Domagoi Kurmaj this series began as a time loop magical school fantasy series, and it did not stay that way as Zorian started adventuring outside Curious Magical Academy in Volume 2 and beyond. The world of Altazia is rich with history, and personally speaking, the way the intricate lore and legends were delivered in an info dump manner was a bit difficult for me to register. This changed in the latter half of the series, and although I wouldn't call Mother of Learning an action oriented series, every volume in the series undoubtedly have pivotal and impactful confrontations. But no battle scenes in the first three volumes reach the stakes or the quality and quantity encounters in Mother of Learning Arc 4. The final volume of the series has some jaw-dropping moments in the middle and last section of the novel, and the 100 pages climax sequence were totally magnificent in my opinion. Those who have read it will know what I'm talking about. I am talking about the I win chapters. These were badass and extremely well done. You have to read it and find out for yourself. There are many valid and believable reasons why Mother of Learning became one of the most popular and highly praised web novels. Mother of Learning Arc 4 is my favorite of the entire series. And this is one of the relatively few series consistently superb from the beginning to the end. Do not let the stigma on web novels stop you from trying uh, The Mother of Learning. Great storytelling can be brilliant in any medium of storytelling. It all depends on execution. If you love reading time loop fantasy series with a coming of age and also magical school trope, I cannot recommend uh, the Mother of Learning series highly enough. The tale of Zorian Kaczynski will be one to remember, and as some of you might know already, it has sparked my interest in trying out more web novels, uh, more fantasy web novels uh, to read. Nobody103 is currently writing and publishing a new web novel series rooted in the epic fantasy subgenre titled Zenith of Sorcery. And I am confident it will be another amazing fantasy series. Once more chapters are out in the Zenith of Sorcery, I will immerse myself in the author's next venture. Before that, if you haven't read Mother of Learning yet, you have plenty of time to catch up with the author's first web novel series. And I truly hope you will have a blast with it as much as I did. And that's pretty much the end of my uh, short series review on Mother of Learning. I really enjoyed uh, this series, as some of you might be able to tell already. I've been talking about this series for the past uh, four or five months, really. But yeah, it is consistently great. I gave every book in the series 4.5 out of 5 stars, and I might upgrade my rating for the last volume, uh, Mother of Learning Arc 4. I might upgrade that to 5 stars rating, but we will see how it goes in the upcoming few months. And lastly, before I close this review, if you can try to get uh, the hardcover copy of Mother of Learning published by Redmark Creative. I only have the first volume right now with me. I think the second volume is still on the way to me, but the first volume alone already is so well produced and stunning. The quality of the paper is so well done. It is premium and it comes with an end paper, beautiful front and back end paper with an illustration done by Asur Misoa and also Daniel Kamarudin, as you can see in today's uh, video. One of my patrons have showcased a unique front and back and paper is once again uh, featured in Mother of Learning Arc 2 hardcover. And I think it is safe to assume this will be repeated again in Mother of Learning Arc 3 and Arc 4 hardcover. But no worries if it's not possible, you can still read the ebooks and yeah, the ebooks will contain all the words inside the hardcovers. And I think that's pretty much it for me today. Do let me know what you think about uh, this series if you have read it. If not, uh, do you plan to read Mother of Learning someday? I think it is a great series and as I said, it has certainly sparked my interest to trying out more web novels. As I mentioned in my previous uh, five fantasy web novel series that I want to try reading as soon as possible. 
So yeah, that's it for me today. Uh, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.